please don't leave because we have another fantastic, fantastic session for you and it's energizing women's capacities in crisis situations and you really want to stay and listen to this. All right, so it's going to take the form of a fireside chat or maybe it's going to be a, a stroll right around this podium that uh, I'm going to have with Eve Dacour who is the ooh, ex executive director of the International Committee of the Red Cross. So Eve has been director general since 2010 but previously he's actually had a career with the Red Cross for over t two decades in many challenging roles and contexts including Israel and the occupied territories, Yemen, Chechnya, Georgia, and Sudan. Yikes. So with that, please, would you welcome Yves Dacour onto the stage? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Good afternoon. Okay, so let's start immediately, if you don't mind. I don't mind. I see everybody leaving, so let's move no, on. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> let's say something to scare them, right? What is happening? There like, seems to be an escalation in crisis situations, right? Violence, wars, people fleeing, failing states, coming to Europe, right? Should we be scared? I think we should be scared, yes, but not scared about so much the people, but I think what is changing possibly is at least different elements. One is the speed of change. One is the fact that people, wherever they are, they are suffering, uh, let's say they have a multiple pressure. And what is maybe new is they have the choice. And this is something we need to capture, which means if you are in Syria right now, of course, at the same time, you're suffering from the violence, extreme violence. You have to know that possibly in our, I would say, modern life, if I look at my own organization, the International Committee of the Red Cross, we are present in 85 countries working in very close proximity. I don't think we've seen so, something so, so violent that what we've seen right now in, in Syria. And in general, in the Middle East, very, very violent. So you have violence, but at the same time, you can also look when you look at Syria through, in fact, climate change. Syria has been a country which has suffered over the last 10 years of climate change. You can look at through the prism of economy, right? Uh, and this is also this question of multiple pressure on the people. At the same time, and I think it's something important for us, we need to understand we don't have to look at people just as victim. Even if you're a Syrian or an Iraqi or a South Sudanese, mm -hmm. you are connected. You sometimes are educated. You can make some choices. You start to understand. So that's what is happening. It's this combination on one hand. The other one is I think we need to grasp that. And I'm not sure if the word I'm using are the right word is we're living a time of transition when it comes to political arena. I think we're living in really a time of transition, and there is one thing which is absolutely a fact right now, is there is no international convergence, none, when it comes to deal with global issue. Mm. We will see in Paris maybe a little bit, but when it comes to deal with conflict, poverty, migration, there is none of it. Look at that. And of course, that's one of the problems we confronted. We have global issues which of course have a huge impact on all of us and with a very, very little ability to have global solutions. So if you bring that together, the speed of the change, the revolution which is happening maybe in the Middle East, I think we have to talk about revolution in the Middle East, right? The multiple pressure on the people, what I think we need to start to grasp here in Deauville is that we are not immune anymore, all of us. The time where our strategy was to contain mm -hmm. the problems. Mm. You know, let's contain pandemia. Let's contain poverty. Let's contain violence. Let's contain migrants. Let's build a wall. Mm. This time is over. And that's what we start to feel. This is why we are nervous, because we start to understand that things are different, and it will impact us yeah. dramatically. Yeah. And we need to be able to start to look at these issues completely differently. Yeah. So are you optimistic or pessimistic? that things are going to get better in the short term? Um, when I was listening just to, uh, to uh, the previous uh, uh, panel and also to, uh, to uh, our six uh, award winner, uh, it gives me strength, you know? I see people being able to find solutions, connecting, but at the same time, let's recognize that the next coming 10 years, I don't know more, I cannot predict more than 10 years, but let's say <laughs> the next coming 10 years will be incredibly challenging because the things are changing so quickly 
because today, really, politically, I think there's such um, a tensions between what the political arena are, what political responsibility are, what the, dip the real diplomatic element are, and the problems. I see such a gap, which means we will go through, at least for the next five to 10 years, through an extremely difficult issues, and which is why it's so important, whatever we're doing, whatever our business are, whatever our responsibility, we need to start to frame our thinking to try to integrate issues which are not just happening there, but will happen there. So when it's about conflict, it's not just there, it will happen in our society. We are in front of, I really believe, a globalization of vulnerability. It's happening there, but it's also happening in our society. So what does that mean? How do we connect? How do we frame that? This is what we need to be aware of. So can we zoom in a bit, right? If you take a conflict situation, what is the impact of that in a kind of gendered way? I mean, how are women right, more vulnerable than men? I think what we see is when you, when you look at most, if not all, humanitarian crises, especially when it comes to conflict, what you can see is conflict are not gender, gender neutral. They're not, absolutely not. Right. It's sad to say that, but it's true. Wherever we are, what we see is that women are normally the first one to be under pressure. They are under pressure. They are victims of abuse, of exploitation. Uh, they are put under pressure. And they are the one who uh, most of the time have to find solutions to survive in a very, very difficult situation. Right. That's absolutely clear, right? right? But if I may be honest, if I zoom in, what worries me much more over the last coming, I would say, months or maybe year, is if I look at Middle East, with maybe the exception of Tunisia, and I'm careful about what I'm saying, is if I look at Iraq, Syria, as an example, women were at the table, not always, but they were able in the communities, but also, I would say, at the power to be there. Today, no women. I don't see where the women are. They have disappeared somewhat. And that worries me a lot, because if women are not at the table, right. if they're not central to the solution, this is what we know, nothing will happen. And there is a huge gap here happening. If you look at, the, I, I don't know how to call it, but what is happening right now in the Middle East, you can see in all government, what I'm sitting, discussing, a few years ago, there would be women there. They would be there sitting with us. They're not anymore. They disappear from government. They disappear from also some of the communities. You can see the social pressure is increasing on the women. And the women are central, absolutely central uh, to solutions. And this is where you need the international consensus that can encourage governments to make sure that the right stakeholders are around the table, including women. That's what you need, but I think we need to go one step further. I think we need to be honest, and I think I need to start with us as an organization, and all of us. If I look at my own organization, we're talking about the International Committee of the Red Cross. We are 15,000 people working in 85 countries. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, if you're serious about trying to work with women, is then you have to be closer to them. You have to take the risk to be in close proximity because if my assumption is right, which means it's more difficult to connect with women, right. you have to be there to be able to listen to A, what are their needs? Right. Their needs are different. And you cannot just you know, decide what is good for them. You have to take the risk also to possibly change the way you operate. What they're telling us in Syria is don't bring us food. This is not what we're interested. Bring us mental health. This is what we want. We want psychological support now, not after the war, because it's so tough, you know? As an organization, you have to be able to adapt to that, to listen, to find solutions, you know, help us. You know what is interesting in Iraq, for example? There is a lot of women today which are breadwinner right. of the families. They are critical, but socially not recognized like that. Right. How do we do that? As an organization, you need to capture that. Right. You need to be subtle in the solutions, be smart. So that's one element. Uh, again, if I look at my own organization, it means also be much more radical in the way we work with our own team. You know, when I started long time ago, uh, I was working in the Yemen. I do remember, I should not say that, and please don't record me that, but uh, when I started in Yemen at the time, the first advice I got from my colleagues was, you cannot have in your team any international woman. It's impossible, because it's very difficult as an international woman to talk to Yemeni male. So don't have it. It's just, it really needs to be a male team. But what I discovered after a few months is me as a male, right. I had no access to women. I had no access to women in Yemen. Right. 
no access. So again, interesting, how do we challenge assumption in our own organization in order to make it? Be radically diverse, bring in diversity in our organization, that's one element. So we can do something, but I agree with you, this is just something small. We need to absolutely go further and try to fi okay. find solutions which goes beyond. But I want to challenge you on something. Please. You said, I don't get why, where, where the women have gone, right? Why they're no longer at the table, why they don't no longer have a voice. Well, isn't it quite simply, the sad fact is that because the men are excluding them, right? So isn't the challenge here that somehow you need to be working with men to persuade them of the benefits, right, of having women at the table? So, look, you're a guy. Why are you so passionate about this? Uh, a, it's true, there's no solutions without men in that case. I agree with you, absolutely. And to be clear, and, and, and so far I've not found the solution, but I think maybe there is a mix of solutions. One, impunity. I'm deeply convinced. This is where we have failed so far, all of us collectively. My experience of education, I was absolutely fascinated by what I've heard before. But you want to influence people? You want to influence really people when they are under stress? And imagine what war is. Mm. It's well known. It's education and sanction. We all know that. So impunity is a critical element. How are we fighting that? Making sure that the international covenant court, the national legislation work, that's one element. Mm. The other one, I agree with you. We have to find solution which allow somewhat men not to lose face. Maybe there is something about social change and dynamic which is possible, absolutely. And here, this is the limit of my own organization. My organization is doing humanitarian work, not social change. And we need to bring also actors which are doing social change much more closely to conflict. Be careful, don't let the conflict only dealt by humanitarian or by military. That's my message to you. I was impressed by today, by what I've heard. What you are applying with your society, with your people, maybe, maybe there are elements which can be applied to conflict. Don't really, don't let the conflict only be dealt by humanitarian. And if I'm passionate, it's because I am deeply convinced um, that there won't be any solutions if we don't find a mixture between men and women. I'm really convinced. I come, my education has I touched my, my life, my, my, even I would say, without being too personal, but my, even my uh, sentimental life has shown that yes, right. if you have an equal uh, dynamic, that makes an enormous difference. In my experience, and experience of my own organization, everywhere we've been, solutions, very pragmatic solutions, came from women. So if there is a space, if men are able to give a space to that, that will make a huge difference. And it's really time, and this time is absolutely critical. If we don't grasp it, if we just let conflict be dealt by, you know, and far away be contained by the military or by the humanitarian, that will be a disaster for humanity. I really deep, deeply believe so. Okay, I'd like now to open to the floor to questions, comments for Eve. Do you have a question, comment? Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, uh, what you up. said, oh, so Joanna Bryson, University of Bath. Joanna Bryson, University of Bath. Um, wh what you said was amazing and I think it accurately reflects, I'm an academic and but what I see of what's happening too. I, are there other, are there any kind of other organizations? Are you calling for a new kind of NGO? Or, I mean, this, for the social, I mean, for, for cr constructing new social realities. I agree with you, you don't want that to be the military and you need to stay neutral. So, so who would do that? Who are you calling, just us individually or? No, I, th I think it's, it's, it's a mixture of two things. Uh, I would really strongly believe that we should not create a new NGO or a new international organization that won't solve the problems. I think what I find so interesting if I look at is the Global Forum, it, a lot of you are what I would call convergence people, which means you are dealing with different, in fact, silo at the same time, right? So I think maybe what is interesting is that we start to think differently and that you frame in your own solutions already, the fact or in your own analysis, that there are questions of conflict. So my question is, no, let's not create an NGO which will deal again with conflict, wrong. Let's make sure that you bring conflict, violence, and I know it's difficult in your own thinking. We've seen it in education, but we can do better. You know, in education right now, it's very weak when you go in. I'm, my team is working Northeast Nigeria right now. There is nobody, I can tell you. There's no single person there. Maybe one or two few local, but very, very limited. All the people, when they are also in conflict, what they will tell you, they want security, point two, they want education. Let's bring that there. 
So I think there is something about how are we able to bring what is the value here into the conflict. I think there is something which is important. That's what will be my call of action. And maybe can I add another Please call of action? Ahead. Here, the world, the, this, this uh, world forum uh, um, here, bring, I was very happy to see that you have some delegation coming from Singapore. Can I make a proposal? And Tunisia. Can I make a proposal? Next year, do the same, but bring also, for example, Syrian. Mm. Or bring Afghan. Please, make a choice that every time you bring one country which is very developed, very diverse, but bring also just a country which is really going through a difficult time. Because what you will do, bring them, them with you, it will, it will be extremely helpful. But it sounds like it's not the women we need to bring, it's the men. I agree with you. I, no, I totally agree with you. No, I totally agree. But still, the fact that you are together, that we are together with you, yeah. is something it's, which is something I value enormously. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, and just maybe bring some of the elements and other platforms. I mean, there are plenty of platforms. Uh, but don't bring too many men here. It will be sorry. No, I'm, I'm happy <laughs> about, about the balance right now. It's really, it works well, uh, if I may say. All right. Well, I'm, I'm getting signals that we have to wrap up here. I know you've all been very, very patient and, and here for two hours already. So really want to thank you for lasting the course. But, but most of all, I, I really want to thank Eve for coming here. I mean, I just can't believe how busy you must be. So thank you. And really, all the best of luck with your work because, you know, it's such important work. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And all the best to you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you also, Sumay. Very wonderful, refreshing, and interesting sessions. So thank you.